Hi everyone, Lazyfire here with Three Toes, uh, and Hi. we're back in the Hate the Player podcast, which uh, we abandoned for a few weeks while we did the Medal of Honor LP. Uh, Three Toes, are you glad to be back to this after the horrors of the Medal of Honor LP? You know, it wasn't really that bad. I mean, it was it was kind of like having a very focused episode every week. So I mean, it wasn't all that different. It was just like we were talking about the exact same thing every week, and you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess. It's it was difficult to uh to go through with it to be honest. It was uh <laughs> it, it, like aren't uh, you missed a few episodes. So I I guess yeah. you Yeah. You may have gotten a little less uh pain than us. But Arnold is going to fucking lose his mind if that thing went to 10 episodes. <laughs> I mean, it it wasn't that bad. I mean, it was a bad game, but I mean, I I kind of got enjoyment out of ripping on it for being so bad. Like, I don't see how Arnold couldn't really take it anymore. Granted, you know, after about so it was what it was nine episodes, right? Yeah, just nine. yeah. After about like six, I felt like we'd seen all that the game had to offer. Mm. Um, maybe not in like actual like order because I'm not. I can't remember at what point the helicopter mission was and all that bullshit but yeah I could see that like you know that far into the game there was nothing really new that was gonna like surprise us or give us anything different to rip on yeah yeah it, like there was never a chance that it was going to like change everything up and do something different right and if it was a even the even when it did decide to do something different uh for example, the helicopter level. You know, there there was a chance to do something that was new and different, and instead it was fucking the most boring mission since the fucking ATV mission. <laughs> oh, God, I completely forgot about the ATV mission. Right, and it's just... Yeah, just... Uh, it, I, I don't even want to talk about it too much because I'm afraid it's going to just... Somehow we're going to have less people listen to this podcast than usual. <laughs> it's like negative people listen to this podcast this week. Uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, it was it was fun to do something a little bit different. Uh, it's probably going to be a while before we get back to that, though. Arnold was actually experimenting with recording video and uh, trying to put something together. God so, help us all. God help us all. He was, uh, he was actually looking at uh, Spec Ops The Line, which I don't know if you're familiar with. I don't... Game. No, I'm not. I don't remember that title. It yeah, it was one of those things that it was kind of hyped, but not really. It was a small studio. Spec Ops is a a game series that's been around for a little while, and they basically revamped it. And so, uh, the guy who voices Nathan Drake, whose name is suddenly escaping Nolan North, uh, voices the main character, and the guy who was Kid and Kid and Play voices his uh, compatriot. <laughs> no shit. I kid you not. And. Uh, Basically, Dubai has the sandstorm. It's all based on Heart of Darkness, and you do horrible shit, and there's a huge twist in the game, and all this other stuff. Mm. Uh, but it's a very generic for a uh, third-person shooter, cover shooter kind of game that has a really intense plot and uh, really interesting visuals at times. So, you was, know, yeah. No, I'm sorry. Keep going. I'll, yeah, I'll... I, I was gonna say it might not be the best thing for us. Uh, you know this three this group of three alcoholic fuck ups but uh, it might work if he decides yeah. to do that it's just i'm i'm tired of the whole serious dramatic military shooter like i'd never thought i'd say it but i'm really hankering for another bad company to where it's uh, a lot more lighthearted now that's an interesting point because i've been playing bad company too quite a bit lately yeah, I, I remembered you had, and it, it kind of made me miss it a little bit. I almost fired up my Xbox 360 and threw it in. I'm just saying this right now. It's on st uh, sale on Steam for 5 bucks. <laughs> I doubt I have a machine that can run it. Uh, well, it's... wouldn't say... What the hell is going on? It kicked me out of Steam. Um, <laughs> you've, you've spent a, they think you have a problem now. They're, that's their intervention. <laughs> Don't I'm, you I'm think afraid. you've given us enough money? It's, 
if they stop taking my money now, I don't know what they're thinking. Uh, but yeah, I've been playing quite a bit of that, and so anyways, the the whole thing with Bad Company 2 is that, like, the multiplayer is such a clear step backwards from Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4. Like, I, I think a lot of people have an issue when I say that, because if you look at a lot of people, it's like, hey, no, this is actually pretty great, what are you talking about? Um, no, not really, it, it's... It's got a lot of quality of life issues versus what's out there now. Like, like, what do you mean? Well, here's a really simple one. When you're sprinting, you uh, basically have to go straight forward and have to turn your head to go le to look left and right and move in that direction. You can't hit the uh, air. Uh, oh yeah, no, yeah, no, no sprint strafing. Yep, that drives me absolutely nuts. Um, and the fact that, like, the the terrain deformation, one of those things that people really, really like about the game, uh, it, you know, it can really fuck your ability to even move normally in the world. That's a problem. Uh, so when people complain about it, I'm more inclined to be like, no, that's, that's, you're wrong. Please stop being wrong. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it was still really fun, though, and... I, I think, at least in my mind, when when I look at at Bad Company Two and you know remember it fondly, I think it's because it had just a more arcadey feel to it as a shooter, to where it wasn't trying to be super realistic like Battlefield Three and I assume Battlefield Four. Mm. Um, you know, and and I mean, as as quote unquote broken as it was, it was still kind of fun, like being able to pistol snipe someone from 200 meters away because there wasn't bullet drop with pistols. Yeah, yeah, that... Some of that stuff, and of course the the shotgun slugs and everything, that can be really fun. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the, the nice level of destruction you do have in that game where you can basically right. take down most buildings. Not every... Some people... There's this really weird, like, movement to get the rose-colored glasses on with you, when you talk about it. Because some people will be like, yeah, every building was something you could knock down. Mm, no. You could knock down most buildings. You couldn't knock right. down every building by right. a large margin. And I mean, yeah, that was that was part of the part of the fun, being like... You know, it's like, oh man, I I know there's a guy in that building. I know he's on the top floor, but I can't I can't hit him. He's just camping in there. And they're like, oh wait, I have a Carl Gustav. I can just take out every single wall of that floor, and the debris will pretty much kill him as soon as this hits the hits the wall. Yeah. And I just I feel like, and again, I don't I haven't played Battlefield Four, but three completely lost that altogether. Yeah. Like, I just was not happy with the destruction in 3. So. Yeah, and, and it is, it's what it is. You know, they. I, I can understand actually where it came from in a lot of ways, because you're basically looking at, you know, will. You know, will. Uh, I'm trying to think of the way to say this the nicest way. But in the game, you more or less had to decide. Dice had to decide if they wanted to have a game that was going to, you know, have the same kind of smaller environments that were present in Battlefield Bad Company 2. Like, look at the maps there. They're mostly these kind of narrow bands of something, and mostly because they wanted to have Rush be the main game mode in that right, game. Right, right. Uh, but, you know, narrow bands, a lot of the buildings were the exact same in every fucking map. Uh, and all this other stuff. And so they had to decide if they wanted to go big or and go back to sort of the bad comp or the battlefield two style design on the maps and then limit destruction in some ways, or if they wanted to keep going with bad company two. And I think they made the right choice in a lot of ways of instead of saying, Okay, bad company two is now how we design all battlefield games and sort of going back when they went back to the numbered series, saying 
this is, you know, every game is going to be unique, or every this game is going to be more like the previous games that had these urban environments with really static buildings, right. and then adding some, you know, like Sign Crossing, where you could uh, shoot the facades off of buildings and drop them on people. It's always fun. Yeah, yeah. Again, all I'm all I'm really saying is that I I wouldn't mind seeing another another bad company that gets back to kind of an arcadey feel. Yeah. But anyway, this is all stuff we covered years ago when we started this fucking yeah. podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's we can keep talking about it all day, I guess. Yeah. Uh, looks like it's not on the Mac. It only took oh. fucking 45 minutes for me to get to this fucking thing this entire time we were talking. Um, wah, wah. Wah, wah. Uh, but well, if you want an example, here's your recommended settings: Windows Vista or Windows 7, an Intel Intel uh, Core 2 Quad or higher, two gigabytes of RAM, and a 512 megabyte video card. That's all that was required for this thing for for your best settings, <laughs> because it came out in 2010. Yeah. And it was designed for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 4. Or 3. Oh, uh, yeah. Might as well be the 4. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, like, just think about how old and how, you know, uh, I don't know, it's such a... It's such a different design philosophy, because the game, even if you're playing it today on a PC, does not look overly impressive. Not gonna lie. Uh, it, it doesn't look great, it doesn't run great even on my PC it very clearly runs at like 30 frames per second and I have something that maxes it out a couple dozen times because they just trans, you know, transfer the code over from the 360 to the PC and uh, hope for the best, kind of yeah So I, I'm, there's nothing wrong with it I think it's a pretty good game overall I just, when you're playing it, you're like, I can see where the, this game was supposed to be different Right. Uh, yeah. So. I finally played Binding of Isaac. Yeah. Well, Rebirth. Yeah. It was really fun. I really enjoyed it. Cool. Um, now, yeah, you played that uh, on a Vita, right? Huh? You cha- You played that on a Vita. No, it was on a PC. Oh, really? A laptop yeah. or something? Or... No, it was on a uh, just my buddy's desktop when I was. I went to a. Denver for like 11 days oh, yeah, um, stayed with some friends and he had a he's a big gamer as well so he had on his Steam account so I just played on his mm. and what were your thoughts on that because I haven't played that I thought it was really really fun um, you know he kind of he kind of explained he, he seemed to have an almost encyclopedic knowledge of all the items and what, you, what each of them, of them did and that well, was really cool, you know, just just the amount of of items that are in that game and how some of them. Uh, he kept using the term. I think it's within the game community uh, synergy between certain items. How you know some items work really get well together, some you know work pretty poorly. Um, which ones to avoid? Which ones to always get? Which ones you know sacrifice some health to get when you get deals with the devil, and just all the different endings you can have to the game and it's I don't know and, and it was a a nice difficult you know I don't even know what kind of game you call it it's not a shooter it's not a platformer just a uh, top down the phrase I've seen a lot recently is I fucking hate saying this rogue light huh and yeah yeah I know, I don't like it either. Um, oh shit, there's a... That's what it is. So, uh, the reason I'm having issues with uh, Steam is there's a current bug going on. Ah. Uh. So, that's why this is happening. You and your white people problems. My white people problems. But, yeah, the... Uh, the whole thing with... Uh, games like Binding of Isaac and Risk of Rain and all these other things uh, where it's you know you're expected to go in and die and play and die and play and die and that sort right. of thing you know that's it's they call those rogue lights because they're not really you know 
rogue was basically a dungeon crawl that you were expected to die a bunch in, right? But right. rogue likes you're not really expected to, you know, you're expected to beat it at some point. You're expected to be able to play it pretty easily. Um. So I I don't know. It's it's a good term. It, it's not a bad term. I just don't like it. <laughs> But yeah, so your uh, your thoughts on you did you play the original? You didn't play the original? No, I've I've never played the original. Um and I've I've heard some some debate, some people saying like, "Oh, well, the original was better in this way, but rebirth's better in this way because of item balance." And, "Oh, well, but this item still isn't balanced. I need to balance this blah 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 blah." But I mean, I'm sure I'm sure I would like it just because I liked it wasn't just I like the content of the game. I like the concept of the game. Right. Yeah, it's an interesting. At the very least, it's an interesting concept. Um, you know, you don't get a lot of games like that because it was. I, I don't know. Well, you didn't play. I don't know if you saw any videos of the original. Uh, but the the feeling you got from looking at it, especially with like the bombs and everything, was that it was definitely meant to be sort of Zelda inspired. Yeah. Oh yeah. You can only looking forward. And I definitely. Yeah, and I definitely get that with you know, with Rebirth. Yeah, especially because they went to the 8-bit graphics instead of the Flash graphics. Um, and they're not even that 8-bit... Gra- like, that's one of the things that has bugged me over the last year or so, is the need that people feel to, like, 8-bit graphics, 8-bit graphics all the time. And in my <laughs> mind, I'm like, no one... You know, these were done at the time out of necessity. Right. Uh, and a lot of the times it was difficult to tell what the fuck you were looking at. <laughs> and you're working with resources that are way better. So if you're going to make something 8-bit, it better be for a good reason, not just right. because, haha, 8-bit graphics are popular. But, you know, that's... Well, I think... I think part of the charm, if you can even call it that, with with Rebirth is the, the graphics quality. And, I mean, is it 8-bit? It seemed a little better than... 8-bit. But. No, no, no. It's That's the thing. Like, a lot of these games... Let's say Shovel Knight, which I actually just bought. Uh, that's... It's a game that's made to look like it could have been made in the 8-bit era. Right. With, like, the kind of pixel graphics instead of uh, having kind of smooth lines or polygons or anything like that, like we expect today. Or yeah. something like Fez or something like that, where it's very clearly made of, like, tiny pixels or blocks that... You know, don't look exactly like you'd expect a modern game. And sometimes, like with Shovel Knight, that's almost to be expected because the entire idea is that you're basically remaking Mega Man, but you have a shovel instead of a, a <laughs> Mega Blaster. Yeah. With but, Rebirth, I can understand it too. Well, and I I think that if if you didn't have it, that kind of graphic style, it, I mean, it's already fucking gory. Mm. Like it might be. Like, that's how you keep it almost kind of cutesy. Like, oh, there's cute little poops that run around the level that you have to shoot. Like, if it was good graphics, you'd be like, why would I want to play a game where I have to shoot piles of shit and have blood explode everywhere and these grotesque fucking bosses? Like, if you thought about it, if it was in, like, a modern graphics engine, it'd be gory as shit. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't, I don't think I'd want to play it. (laughs) It's not a first-person shooter, thankfully. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's nothing, and this is the thing, there's nothing wrong with it, uh, or using that. I think a lot of um, independent developers, especially, have been using that graphic style over the last few years. Uh, Risk of Rain is one of those games uh, that they, you know, they use sort of pixels to make it a little bit easier and make the development a little bit quicker, and they can still do some pretty cool stuff with it. Like Risk of Rain, if they tried to do it in uh, a more modern style they would probably like even now it destroys Arnold or my PCs if we have a bunch of enemies on screen at once and you know <laughs> it's like well what the fuck yeah. Um, but yeah it, it's just a it, it's one of those things where I look at it and I'm like uh, this is kind of cool and then I like walk away and don't really think about the graphic style all that much as long as the game content's pretty good like even the game I'm playing now, uh, Nuclear Throne, is it uses sort of like a 16-bit graphic style, and it's a ton of fun. And I wouldn't care less if the graphic style were more realistic or not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Actually, we're going to be using nuclear throne footage for the background of this podcast. Believe it nice. Or not. Yeah, it's a fun game. I bought it for. Uh, it wasn't even on the Steam sale. It was just like, hey, you could still buy this game, and so I bought it during the Steam sale because Steam told me to do it. <laughs> I gotta stop doing what Steam tells me to do. <laughs> But yeah, uh, other than that, I've been watching a Let's Play of uh, Far Cry 4. Right. Um, which, I mean, it seems like, you know, a Far Cry game. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's nice, open, sandboxy with, you know, plenty of story missions if you want them. Or you can just run around hunting and do whatever the hell you want in some place in India. Yeah, yeah. And has that... Did you play Far Cry 3 at all? I didn't, no. Uh... Oh, Okay. Well, Far Cry 3 and Far Cry 4, they seem... Ah, man. So, Far Cry 2. Let's go back to Far Cry 2. It was completely different than the first Far Cry game because the Cry, the Cry team, the people who made the first Cry, the Far Cry game, they left to go make Crisis. Right. Uh, and they left the license with Ubisoft. And so Far Cry 2 had you, like, tackling or going through this African country in civil war. And you had to like collect collect diamonds, and you had to get a supply of malaria pills <laughs> uh, because you got malaria like first thing in the game during your intro cutscene. Jeez! And you were a mercenary. You had a friend. You could call them whenever you wanted to to come get you and help you out. It was different. Um, it wasn't great either because the guns in the game would deteriorate, and you could end up with no weapon during a really bad time. Uh, but it introduced a lot of stuff that was brought back in Far Cry 3, which was like a uh, closer to what Far Cry 4 is in a lot of ways. Like, you go around, you hunt, you fight the, these guys at these outposts, you take them over for your side. Right. Uh, like, all that stuff. Uh, but have you been enjoying what you've seen? Does that make you want to play the game? Or Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, I mean, you know me, I like I like sandboxy stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would I would definitely play it. It looks it looks pretty fun. Um, I like I like being able to kind of go at my own pace and not get rail and not get railroaded into the next mission like automatically. I like being able to just kind of like dick around if I want. That's why I like the Grand Theft Auto games so much. Yeah, and yeah, I, I mean, can see that it's it's uh, they're really fun like open world games, but at the same time, it's. It's one of those open worlds where there feels like there's a lot less to do than you'd expect. Yeah. I mean, again, they do kind of try and keep you on on track a little bit. Yeah. But. Right. In, I mean, you could level the same kind of complaint at something like a Skyrim or uh, any of the Elder Scrolls games that they give you this huge open world and it's like you end up doing the same shit and grinding out the same stuff over and over again. Right. Like, go fight these guys in this cave, go take over this castle, that stuff. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, that's the the trap of open world, is you have to make a lot of your own fun. Did you jump into uh, Grand Theft Auto Online during its uh, recent Christmas? No, I've I've not had an Xbox Live account since, like, last March. Oh, jeez. So. <laughs> You're uh, living off the grid in terms of video games, huh? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I'm fucking, I'm fucking Ted Nugent off the grid, <laughs> middle of nowhere when it comes to video games these days. I'm avoiding the draft out here in this cabin in the woods. All I've got this, is this MacBook Air from 2014, <laughs> and... Uh, Oh no! This is a full-size MacBook Pro, like seventeen, uh, but it it's probably from two thousand ten. Oh uh, yeah, so not running a lot of stuff on that. New. No. no, I was uh, actually just real quick. I, I wanted to get onto the next topic that you had kind of brought up before this, but uh, I am going. I am inheriting a second copy of Nuclear Throne uh, because the guys who made the game, even though it's early access, have decided to give everyone who's purchased it in early access a second copy to do with as they wish. And uh, so I'm probably going to, once Arnold unfucks his PC, <laughs> uh, I'm going to send it over to him and hopefully he'll be able to do it. But if he doesn't want it, if he decides he doesn't want it, I imagine you would like it because it does play on the Mac from what I recall. 
Yeah, sure, I'd play it. Yeah. I, I just can't remember, like, I would have asked you tonight, and now, good thing he doesn't listen to this, because he would <laughs> fucking, he's offering <laughs> my game to him. Uh, but I believe it plays on the Mac. I can't remember what the uh, system requirements are. No, no, actually, maybe it doesn't. No, it says right here, fucking Mac. It doesn't give me a system requirement for the Mac. I mean, I'm I'm up to be, I'm up to date, uh, OS X wise, so it should be fine. Yeah, you guys um, had the uh, the very first required update on that, huh? Uh, not that I know of. No, there was a required update to the Mac. Hmm. I guess I have that. Hell, I don't okay. know. Generally, they don't push that forward, so I was kind of wondering if you'd had yeah, to I'm go on that. I'm on 10.6.8. Yeah. Which okay. I have no idea if that's the most current or not. <laughs> well, hey, I don't know anymore either. Um, uh, one one thing that actually makes me do wish I had a, a PC that was up to speed. Um, well, not up to speed, but it, it kind of pissed me off that they changed uh, Don't Starve Together. Yes. Like, the co-op version is not released on the Mac yet. Well, um, yeah. And a buddy of mine has it, and, you know, you get that, and you get two copies as well, because the whole idea is that you play with somebody. Right. And he was going to gift it to me, and I can't play it, so. Uh, yeah, Arnold was actually wondering if we wanted to do that for something of a, a co-op series at some point, and he's like, yeah, I bought it. Arnold... By the way, doesn't read the fine print. I've noticed because <laughs> last time I talked to him in depth, he was looking at the Steam sale and Dark Souls Two was on sale, and he's like, "Oh man, it got nines and everything like that." And he's really into the idea of buying it. And just the week that week, they had announced that there was going to be another version of Dark Souls Two that comes out with all the DLC, better graphics, all these upgrades that. Uh, like they're going to re-release it on the the PS4 and Xbox One with all these upgrades and that you'll have to buy a new copy of the game if you want those same quality of life benefits on the PC. And so I think he may have bought that. Mm. <laughs> I have to check with him. Um but he also want he's like, "Yeah, I bought Don't Starve Together." I was like, "Did you have Don't Starve?" Yeah. Well, it says right there you get it for free once Don't Starve Together is out of early access. Why did you buy that? <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, then, see, like, I bought Don't Starve when right. it was, I mean, hell, that was back when it pl- just played in Chrome. Right, yeah. Way back in the day, right? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, you. I remember I had the hardest time getting people on board for that game. And then, and then it fucking blew it. up. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, it's one of those weird games where it's like you tell somebody what it is, and they're like, they, "Oh, I might check that out." Uh, it sounds like a Minecraft ripoff. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, if you give them the, just the basics, but then you play it, and it's like, uh, "Huh, this is a little different." It's like, no, this game's really fucking hard <laughs> and frustrating. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's one of those weird things, but. Yeah, the the uh, the fun of Nuclear Throne is that it's basically Binding of Isaac, but ultra violent guns and everything. <laughs> You'll see it. Um, so the other thing I wanted to talk to you about uh, that you had mentioned before this was you're watching a playthrough of NBA Live 2K15, I believe it was. Uh, not NBA Live, just NBA uh, 2K15. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. NBA yeah, Live, Live 2K15 is something different. you don't want to touch. Yeah, with a ten foot pole. Um, yeah, and like I don't, I don't really like. First of all, I don't like NBA at all, and I only have like a limited liking of college basketball. But for some reason, watching someone play this game is actually kind of entertaining because it shows you. And first of all, they're doing a um, like a, a created character, mm-hmm. and it's he's playing on Xbox One. So it uses the Kinect camera to scan your face and then creates the player with your face. And it's fucking hilarious because it makes you look so deformed unless you have absolutely perfect like studio photographer lighting on your face. 
Oh no. Um yeah, <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's actually it's actually B double O, one of the Minecraft guys. Uh. Yeah. Um But it's it's interesting and he he doesn't play I mean he plays full games, but he does six minute quarters. Uh-huh. So it's kind of a quick game. So the the videos end up being like a half hour a piece. Um but no, it's it's just really interesting because you start out as um a kid straight out of college who is entered in the draft and your agent, you know, assured you you were going like, you know, second or third round. Well, you go undrafted. I'm pretty sure this happens to everyone in the game when you start like my career. Uh-huh. You go undrafted. Um, a team picks you up on like a 10 day contract, or maybe you have a choice of a couple different teams who offer you like 10 day contracts Mm -hmm. and you have to, you have to build your career to where, you know, you have to, you try and get a full season contract by performing in game and you don't play the whole game. You're not a starter. You're some fucking scrub. They picked up on a 10 day contract straight out of college. (laughs) You didn't get drafted. So like you have to impress the team with like, maybe five minutes of playing time throughout the entire game. Yeah. Um, and so you, you you try and get a contract. Um, you try and get, you know, a deal with the better team further down the line. You try and become a starter. Uh, you try and get endorsement deals through all these, you know, achievements like getting a triple-double and all, you know, shit like that, scoring 30 points in a game, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. But... I think the reason that I'm kind of liking it most of all is that it's it's kind of helping me understand like how you play basketball because it shows you the plays on the court with like the lines saying like okay this player is going to move here now they're going to pass here oh this guy's going to come set a screen here it shows you how each of the computer players are going to move and how you're expected to move throughout that play if you're going to run the play. I mean, you can just call off the play and start, you know, winging it and doing it whatever you want, but it's actually helped me kind of understand how plays are run in basketball, which I I'd, I'd never really looked into before, so it's actually kind of interesting. Yeah, and I went to I went to a big basketball school and uh Whenever I watched the games, I always felt like I was just kind of watching guys run around the court and play. Yeah, exactly. It's hoops. it's like yeah, it's like and it's like backyard football. Just everyone go out for a pass. Yeah, like just just get open. But no, I mean there is there is actual logic behind it. You know, you want your you know centers or whatever are gonna try and stay close to the basket to get rebounds, and your point guard's gonna run the play and pass it around and get assists and. You know, your big guys are going to come set screens for people to run around, and it's yeah. it's been pretty interesting. And and it, for people who aren't familiar with with B Double O, he can you know he's not everybody's cup of tea. He can be kind of cheesy and ham it up. Um, but and it's at, at first I hated this, but he he put on a face cam. Oh. Like people were begging him to put on a face cam, but he's he's such an animated guy that when he's playing poorly, it's pretty funny because he gets so frustrated with the game. (laughs) And part of it's, like, completely out of your hands. Like, you can, you know, it doesn't matter how good you are sometimes. Like, you've got to have a good team as well because if you you start running hot in the game, the other team is going to start double-teaming you. So you need to pass to other players and hope they make their shots. And just when when the computer just starts just constantly failing to make their shots, it's it's kind of funny to watch watch yeah. people get upset. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't played a basketball game in years. I think the last time I played, Shaq was on the fucking cover. <laughs> Give you an idea how long ago it, it might have been. Shaq Fu. Um, so, <laughs> so, uh, or no, it was NBA. It was. I can now remember it. It was 2006. It was NBA Jam because somebody brought their SNES to school. God. Um, <laughs> that's oh my god! Do you remember Double Dribble on the NES? Yes, I do. God, that was like the only aside from NBA Jam. That was the only other basketball game I ever played. Was Double Dribble? Yeah, my dad, uh, my dad and I used to play that, and we used to play uh, Blades of Steel. <laughs> The hockey game. Yeah, the hockey game. <laughs> like that and then when my brothers came along we, we ended up getting uh, Wayne Gretzky's three D hockey. Nice. And so we'd play that and like trash talk. It was great. It was, I played know, I played straight up NES ice hockey. Like that was about it. 
Mario Golf time. Or Golf for the NES. <laughs> yeah, Golf. <laughs> it's like back when you could just name games whatever the fuck. <laughs> it's like, you could call whatever you, you could call it whatever you wanted as long as it described what was happening. Uh, punch Out, for example, was about punching people out. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, the, the titles of the games were just exactly what you did. Excite Bike. It was an exciting bike. Yes. Now you have games like Dishonored that's about <laughs> killing people and being some sort of whale god thing. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Fucking. Or Rage, which has nothing to do with anything that happens in that game. <laughs> uh, Rage at the comet that hit the planet and caused me to go into <laughs> suspended animation for hundreds of years. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck is this about? Um. Yeah. Uh, so you're enjoying that, obviously. Yeah, it's it's been fun to watch. And once again, does that make you kind of want to go like, maybe I want to play this, or are you kind of still on the fence about that, um, considering your history with sports games and the fact I mean, that you don't have uh, yeah anything to play games on? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's if if I already had an Xbox One, um, I would. I, after watching this, I would probably yeah, I would probably get it. Yeah, it's it's kind of gotten my attention enough to where it's like, oh, I wonder, I wonder how I would you know fare at this game because obviously watching someone play and especially like a sports game, it's easy to kind of you know be an armchair quarterback or in this case I guess an armchair point guard, and kind of say oh well you know you should have you know oh well that guy was obviously going to move that way why didn't he just follow him? Mm-hmm. But apparently you know it's there's a bit of a, I guess maybe a delay, because it's it's trying to compensate for, you know, real life reflexes, I guess, and attributes. And you do you do earn like skill points and you put into different at- attributes for your player, mm-hmm. to where yeah, no one in real life can react perfectly every single time and have like perfect reflexes. Like yeah, you know, somebody's gonna juke you out of your shoes every once in a while and blow right past you. Yeah, um, you're gonna have momentum. To where if you're following a guy along the line, if he cuts real quick, you're not going to be able to cut with him perfectly. You're going to kind of overshoot a little bit. Right. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of got me to where I was like, oh, I wonder, I wonder how good I would be at this game. So I would, <laughs> I would, I would pick it up and yeah. you know give it a try. Maybe find a pre-owned copy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. See, I see how see how horribly the Kinect camera could could scan my face and put on an NBA player. What you should do is take, like, a cat or a dog and have to... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, whiskers. I wonder if anybody's done that. Oh, my God, that would be amazing. Considering the Connect often identifies cats and other an- and lamps as guests <laughs> instead of objects, <laughs> uh, it's very possible. Um, so, yeah, I, I say give it a shot. I say oh go out, God. get an Xbox One, start I need recording to, games. I may, I may have to tweet at him and tell him to do that with his dog or something. Yes. <laughs> just, just make a dog face player. <laughs> <laughs> and just see what happens. <laughs> That'd be great. I want to see that now. Um, oh. Season 2 of NBA 2K14. <laughs> playing as Rex. It's the pet league. Yeah. Then it would actually be like NBA hang time where you could play as werewolves and shit. <laughs> Not making that up. Uh, like Teen Wolf. Yeah, it was basically Teen Wolf. Um, so yeah, have you uh, have you been watching or like tempted to get anything else in this holiday season? Uh, not really. I'm, I've actually got my YouTube uh, sub box open right now. Uh, somebody's doing a Fable playthrough. I haven't Whoa. seen that game in years. Bully too. I don't know if you remember Bully. Yeah, yeah. Oh. They, well, both of those just got HD re-releases on PC. Oh, so maybe that that's why. A, um, um, but honestly, it seems like. I mean, I'm not gonna call it, but it seems like it seems like the whole like Minecraft obsession is kind of starting to fade away a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's there's only so much you can fucking do in that game, man. Yeah, and 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 the few the few series I have been watching. That are are Minecraft related, related or heavily modded Minecraft. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's uh, that's kind of where my wife and I are. Cause, like, she used to when she was unemployed, 
this is like two years ago now, she watched through the entire backlog of several Minecraft LPers. Jeez. I'm talking hundreds of videos. Um, and now it's like, if you see something that's Minecraft related, it's like, I'm building this giant fuck all city and I've been doing it for two years. Yeah. This is all I do for you fuckers. Yeah. Just watch it, you weirdos. And then it's like, here's the series I'm doing for fun. Like, <laughs> it's going to take me a while to put all this stuff together, but it's kind of interesting to watch. Um, there's not really a lot of, hey, me and this guy are going to go through a cave anymore. Because you've seen that video. There's only so many permutations on that video you can watch. Right. So, I can understand some of that. Um, but, yeah, but what's like, what's going to take the place of Minecraft with a lot of these people? Oh, God, I don't know. Don't Starve seems like when Don't Starve Together becomes a real, like, release product, I think that'll probably be pretty big for at least a little while with the uh, people working together. Um, but yeah. outside of that, it's, like, there's no game where you can just play it. I guess No Man's Sky is probably going to be the big thing. Have you seen that? I don't think so. It's an open universe game instead of an open world game where you basically travel to different planets and fight aliens in the, the space areas and you land on a planet it's populated by fucking dinosaurs and shit huh. and it's it's actually really neat looking it's going to be a PS4 and PC exclusive when it launches um, and that's sometime in the next year I believe that looks like it's probably going to be a huge thing and some of the other survival games like The Long Dark and stuff like that are probably good yeah I watched I watched like a a quick playthrough of that little bit that they released for The Long Dark yeah um, and my first my first thought was like huh that's that's my porn name I don't know if that... uh, yeah. you better sue him <laughs> might, might be a good idea. uh but so, no, I mean it's it's tough to it's tough to gauge like what's going to be the next big thing because I mean who would have fucking guessed that Minecraft would would have been as big as it is? Not Microsoft. No. <laughs> they only know how big it is now. <laughs> like, but the people who, by the way, over uh, the Thanksgiving holiday because we we're doing the thing, I got to see what it looks like when a seven-year-old gets a hold of Minecraft, and I was just disappointed. I just like, I'm going to go downstairs and divorce your aunt, because I can't be part of this shitty family anymore. <laughs> this is just, really? This is your Jesus. house? This is your fucking house in creative <laughs> mode? It's like four spaces tall and five spaces wide? You're proud of this shit? Get the fuck out. Dude, that was the funniest thing whenever, uh, and I, God, I don't even know if this guy's even alive anymore. Back when Woody's gamer tag kind of made the, the change from Call of Duty to Minecraft. Yeah. And just clicking on some footage of like streams of when he played on his server, yep. and just the crap that he and everyone on his server would build is just <laughs> the most basic bullshit buildings you could ever come up with. And it's like, oh, you have a glass ceiling with lava in it. Mm. Yeah, I had uh, in one of my worlds, I built a tower to the top of the world. And my nephew took a look at it, and I showed it to him. He's like, why do you call it tower? He's like, well, you open this door here, and I had the door on pistons, so it was like, um, like it was iron blocks, and you just hit yeah. a button, and the door would open. And he's like, what the, how did you do that? Like, you, you're not ready. You're not ready, son. <laughs> and uh, then I showed him, like, how tall it was, and he just, he's just, I'm going to destroy your world or play in it. Like, you couldn't decide what you wanted to do more. <laughs> Because he was so upset with it. Um, <laughs> so you can't have that many animals, but I do. Come and fight me over it, Ollie. You can't do anything. Um, so, yeah. Uh, before we go, I just wanted to say it's, it's now uh, the time of the year where video game websites and such are putting together uh, their top ten lists. Oh, God. And Giant Bomb has continued to make me fucking hate certain members of their staff, particularly Cle Patrick Klepek, um, who I have obviously a long-running feud uh, with, uh, despite the fact that he has no idea I exist. Uh, and part of that is because in one of his Game of the Years is uh, PT, which stands for Playable Trailer, 
which is the playable trailer for Silent Hills, and it's just basically a hallway, and you open a door, and things happen, and then you walk to the other end of the hallway, you open a door, and things happen. That's, like, his number six game of the year. <laughs> Fucking Patrick it's been a Clapper bad year. Is a useless motherfucker. Um... The other thing was that Fox News had like a top ten games of the year thing, and it was like all mobile and iPhone games that were like threes and shit like that. Um, Fucking freemium games. It it bugs the hell out of me when people are picking, and I can't, you know, there's no accounting for taste, and this is why top ten lists are so fucking stupid. At the end of every year, where someone's like, "Hey, we're gonna make a top ten list of all the games," and you see like the same couple of games will appear on a few people's lists or a few websites lists and you kind of kind of understand that but then you have somebody who's like my top game of the year is this piece of shit you've never heard of it was only released in flash in india and i had to pirate it using a proxy like okay what makes it good i can't really describe it it's a tower defense game like <laughs> Dota came out. <laughs> it's like, isn't Dota a tower defense game? Should you talk about Dota? Um, but if we, I, if I had to actually go out and say, here are my top games of the year, I don't think I could do it because most of the games I played this year were Battlefield Four and fucking Wolfenstein. And like, <laughs> dude, Wolfenstein seems pretty great. Wolfenstein is easily my top game of this year because it's probably the only game that was released in 2014 I've played. <laughs> um, that's not early access. Although uh, I am now actually considering doing something I've kept telling myself I wouldn't do, and I, like I've had my hand hovering over uh, the button to purchase Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes uh, because at first I was like, that seems kind of neat that they have it on the PC now. That's kind of cool, uh, but. It turns out you can get some minor mods running in it now. Hmm. So a moddable Ground Zeroes, where people are going to come up with crazy shit that goes into it that makes it look like Skyrim. Uh, they didn't release mod tools for the game, I should point out, but people are modifying the files to add things and take things away. Like, you can now play as Raiden all throughout the game instead of during one VR mission or something like that. Like, kind of neat. Yeah. <laughs> And then I saw a video of somebody putting down a bunch of mines and then launching a jeep into a guard tower to take it out. <laughs> now I kind of... That was like... I could do that. <laughs> I can make this happen. Now but, you're speaking my language. Yeah. But, like, still, I... This has been a weird year for games because I can't think of anything that I was, like, watching the... Tra this is something I thought when I was watching the E3 presentations this year when it was like, yeah, and this will be out in 2014. You just go, fucking why? <laughs> Nothing else is coming yeah. out this year. And I don't think, just by association with the year of 2014, I don't think you're making a good case for your game. Like, and I, I, I mean the fact that we had, you know, the first full year of next-gen console stuff, too. The fact that there were no, like, memorable best games is kind of troubling. Yeah, the fact that you know, your big game from Microsoft this holiday season was the Master Chief Collection, and it was broken as fuck. Well, at first it was supposed to be Titanfall. Well, Titanfall came out early this year. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's already yeah. down to, like, $10 on Origin. Yeah. Because, uh, <laughs> oh boy, Titanfall's community died fast. Um, <laughs> then The Titanfall. Uh, then they had the double whammy of Sunset Overdrive and Fantasia Music Evolved. Uh, Fantasia Music Evolved sold, like, I kid you not, 6,000 copies. <laughs> it was made by... It was... Now, it had the full Disney license, and it was made by Harmonix. Like, not exactly a bad set of combinations. And a lot of people talked it up, and it's actually made its way onto a couple top ten lists, but... It didn't sell because no one wants to use the fucking Kinect as a game input device. Yeah. Something that gamers have been telling Microsoft for the better part of six years now, and they just don't give a fuck. Um, and the other one was Sunset Overdrive. Did not really sell all that well, like a hundred something thousand copies. And uh, so that actually, they gave the game away for free uh, as like one of the games with gold things just recently. <laughs> so. <sighs> 
it's not looking good there, and then I can't even think of something that came out for the PS4 this year. Like, you could put a gun to my head, and I think I'd say The Last of Us. Yeah. That might be it. So, like, it's difficult to, to think about what actually released this year that was interesting on any console or home system. I, I guess... Oh, man, was Dark Souls 2 last summer? No, it was this year. No idea. Dark Souls 2, official game of the year, even though I haven't played it. <laughs> like, I, like, this year has just been really shit for games. I think a lot of that is actually probably due to the uh, use of early access on the PC. Yeah. And then some really dumb um, decisions made by Microsoft with regards to their... Uh, accepting of games that were like Microsoft requires that any game that comes out for the Xbox One uh, for the arcade system or whatever it is either be released the same day as on other consoles or be released first there so a lot of games that are on the PC I think they've actually uh, let let go of some of those requirements but any games that are released on the PC first and have like a Steam release they won't take yeah so uh, kind of dangerous there. Yeah. So, uh, oh no, you know what? Shadows of Mordor. That was a good game too. That came out. Oh yesterday. yeah, forgot about that. I beat it. It was really good. The fucking ending sequence sucked. Like you seriously end the game with a quick time battle. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> Fuck that. Let me battle this dude instead of having a quick time event. Um. So yeah, this year shitty year for games. Go play Wolfenstein. Go play Shadows of Mordor. <laughs> and that's it. That's it. Those are the only two games that came out this year, as far as you're concerned. <laughs> of course, Hardline comes out in 2015, that no one's going to buy that. And then <laughs> later in the year, Star Wars Battlefront uh, comes out, which hopefully people will buy because I plan on buying it, even if it looks terrible. Yeah. Because, come on, Battlefront 2 is awesome. Which I have on my PC. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, successful return to the podcast, I think. Probably not, but you know, maybe. Um, we'll obviously be back next week with a little bit more uh, talking and maybe a little bit better subject matter, because Arnold will be here and he can tell us all about how to get fucking viruses on your PC in 2014 <laughs> like a goddamn moron. Uh, I can't wait to hear that story firsthand. <laughs> I I really want him to explain what he was trying to download that yeah. he got fucked up. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, three toast. Thank you for uh, coming on the show once again. Uh, yeah, anytime. Well, you know, a weekly part of it. But uh, hopefully, people stick around for this uh, return to the Hate the Player podcast. Hopefully. Hopefully. Maybe not. Suck Roll tide. Roll tide. Roll tide. Mm-hmm.